Well, I finally figured out how to wire up one of these Chinese variable frequency drives, VFDs, the way I wanted it. Uh, after watching and looking at dozens of videos and reading dozens of posts on the internet, I was still confused. So I finally decided to just come out and start testing things. And I didn't care if I blew up the VFD. I just buy another one. They're only $70. So I have two machines. I have a 12 by 36 jet metal lathe and I have a Grizzly A1 clone small milling machine. I'm using the exact same inverter on both machines. This is an XSY AT1 and it's available on eBay and Amazon and I believe it's also available in a different configuration but basically the same unit. That square hole you see there normally contains the control panel which I've mounted remotely. That in itself was a challenge because I ordered an extension cord for the flat, I don't know, it's about six or seven pin cord. And when it showed up, it was wired backwards. I had to cut each of these little small wires and flip them around to get it to work. Whatever. What I wanted to do was I wanted some type of quick, easily activated shut off switch. You can call it an emergency stop. It really isn't. By code, emergency stop is very complicated. This is a home shop. All I wanted was something that I could hit with my knee quickly if something went wrong. Originally, I had tried to use solid state relays. And I bought a couple of these solid state relays to use and I had them hooked up to just disconnect one leg of the 220 volts coming in to the VFD. But what happened was if you remove one of the legs while the VFD is in service and the motor is running, you brick the VFD. I thought I blew it up. I shut everything off. I waited about a half hour, came back and everything's working okay. But I don't think these VFDs want to be shut off by disconnecting power. The second problem is the remote unit has run and stop, but they're really little teeny buttons. And in an emergency or even close to an emergency, you got to find that little stop button. That, that's, that doesn't work. And lastly, the last thing I ever wanted to do was accidentally leave the chuck key in the chuck and turn the lathe on. When I had this lathe running on a 90 volt DC motor, I simply built this little device over here, which is a piece of pipe with a micro switch. I wired this micro switch in series with this emergency stop switch. And now, to run the lathe, it's simply a matter of turning the switch, it would be on, and to stop it, you just simply push it in. If the chuck key is not in that holder, the lathe won't run. It's just a simple switch. The big issue was how do you wire this up? It's really, really simple. Up here on the top of the variable frequency drive, there's a whole bunch of screw terminals. All you need to do is take a simple on-off switch, wire one leg to common and one leg to the number four screw. And then you go over to the control panel and you program it. And you're going to go to program number 11 and you're going to program it to function number two. Number 11, function number two. Very simple.
But once you do that, the only thing that works now on the control panel is the speed control, the variable frequency control, the little knob. And sure, you can buy a little potentiometer and remotely mount that. I had no need for that. Normally, I'm not going to be changing speed that often. I mostly work in aluminum, and uh, I run it at the same speed all the time. But now I lost forward and reverse over here. I lost jog over here. The only thing I'm interested in is forward and reverse. I probably would never use jog, just not necessary. I've had this lathe for 40 years, and I've never had to jog it. Um, so all I wanted was forward and reverse. That's very simple, too. Again, a simple single pole, single throw, on-off switch. Two wires, and they run up. One goes to common, and one goes to position number six. And then you need to go back into the programming, and you have to program that. Now, all of this wiring and programming is going to be available in hard copy on my website which is rvbprecision.com Roger Victor Bravo Precision.com I did exactly the same thing on the milling machine a simple stop switch a simple forward and reverse switch wired up exactly the same way I also added tachometers to both units. As you can see, I don't have anything running because when I turn on the shop, the compressor comes on and everything else, and it's pretty noisy in here, and you probably wouldn't hear me. The only thing I did otherwise was I made a little plastic panel to cover the hole where the controller was. I mounted everything in a little diamond plate aluminum box that I welded up. So that's what I did. Very, very easy. Um, I don't think it's possible to damage these variable frequency drives if you do something wrong. I think they'll just throw error codes. They won't work. Um, so experiment. And again, even if you blow up the VFD, they're $60. Actually, I just ordered a third one just to have one in stock in case something goes wrong or if I want to wire up one of my drill presses or maybe another machine to work on variable frequency drive because I love them. I love the ability to maintain torque which the DC motor didn't do. I love the ability to instantly reverse which the DC motor would do but it didn't like it. It would make all kinds of weird noises. But more importantly is the power. Now I've got two horsepower on my milling machine and I have two horsepower on the lathe. I've got plenty of power. As you can see this is the motor that I'm using. Very inexpensive. This motor on Amazon was $199. The VFD, I bought one off Amazon and I bought the other two off uh, eBay. And they were the same price. Uh, just for some reason, Amazon isn't stocking this particular VFD anymore. They have similar ones. In fact, they use the exact same model number, but it looks different. I just wanted to keep it familiar. So that's the story. Everything works great. I love the ability to just hit these stop buttons with my knee if I had to. I like the, the fact that both machines now are using exactly the same control functions. I don't have to relearn it. I like the fact that I was able to still use my uh, don't flip the chuck key through the ceiling or at me. Everything works great. So that's it. Don't forget to uh, check out the website rvbprecision.com. Thanks for watching.